And now, the best 60-ish seconds of your week. This week, we observed D-Day, the largest amphibious invasion in the history of the world and a military operation that began the end of Hitler. An amazing moment, not only in American history, but in world history. So you have to wonder, why did it take the Biden administration until 9 o'clock at night to even comment on D-Day? Of course, last year they missed it altogether, so maybe there's some improvement there. But Google's face page on that day had some reference to the man who invented the espresso machine. Think about that. Where have we lost our history? Where have we lost all that really means something about being Americans and about freedom in this world? You've really got to wonder. So this week, we observe Flag Day, and hopefully, Americans will take a moment to reflect upon what that flag really means, represents, and stands for. Flag Day, of course, is a commemoration of the date in 1777 when the Second Continental Congress first approved the design of the new United States flag. Thirteen stripes, red and white and a blue field with 13 stars representing the colonies then, which they called a new constellation. Think about that. And we've added stars ever since, up until 1959 when we got to 50. And so the flag stands today as a bright symbol of liberty, freedom, and justice around the world. Let's all take a special moment to say the Pledge of Allegiance on June the 14th and remember why that flag stands so significant and so important today. And just one little moment of braggadocia there, Pennsylvania was the first state in 1937 to recognize Flag Day as a state holiday. It still, as you know, is not an official federal holiday. It's up to the president to declare it as a day of remembrance. And the president Joe Biden is out on the left coast explaining away inflation, or at least trying to, on the day that he chose to explain it away, a day which recorded the highest inflation in 40 years. Think about that. The stock market tumbled roughly 900 points. You know, when Ronald Reagan became president, the stock market hovered right around that number overall. Today, we're losing it in a single day, largely on news of runaway inflation. And what causes that runaway inflation? Joe Biden would like us to believe that it's Vladimir Putin, but we all know that's BS. The thing that is driving it more than anything else are the phony dollars flowing out of Washington, D.C., tax dollars, taxpayer dollars at their core, in sorts of all kinds of crazy spending that the Congress did over the course of the past couple of years. They were warned, and now the chickens are coming home to roost, and as the stock market craters and 401ks get crushed, they're seeing a double whammy because the dollars lost in the stock market are equating to dollars that are less valuable as a result of the skyrocketing inflation that's causing all sorts of other economic problems. Look at the price of gasoline, the price of groceries, home heating fuel, and every other commodity you can think of if you can even find them in the stores today. That's the Biden economy. And trust me, it's going to be the overriding issue in November of this year. There's going to be an uprising in this country, the likes of which we've rarely, if ever, seen over the economy and the shambles that it's in because of the crazy spending in Washington, D.C., and the Biden notion about how to run an economy, which basically is the Bernie Sanders model. I mean, if you listen to the rhetoric of this administration, it's exactly what Bernie Sanders was saying in 2016. And even Bernie says, what I said back then that was radical is now mainstream. It's mainstream Democrat stuff, sadly. And so many traditional Democrats feel that their party has left them behind. I think you're going to see that reflected in the voting this fall. And of course, it was Biden's Treasury Secretary who not that long ago tried to explain inflation away by simply saying it was temporary. Today we have, for the first time in a long time since World War II, a 
national debt that is greater than the gross domestic product. That's real trouble for an economy, particularly when you're not in wartime. But that's what happens when Washington spends so much more than the taxpayers can afford. So let's turn to something a little more pleasant. Let's talk about baseball for a minute and the Los Angeles Angels ending their 14-game losing streak, the longest in their franchise history. Sandwiched in there was a three-game losing streak to the Philadelphia Phillies, whose new manager, Rob Thompson, has a winning streak of his own going back to 1915, the year that the Phillies first went to the World Series. They didn't win that one and didn't win one for a long time afterwards. But Rob Thompson in Philadelphia is reinvigorating the Phillies there and showing them at least some signs of life. We'll see how the next 100 games play out. And today is the running of the Belmont Stakes, the longest race in the Triple Crown. No Triple Crown winner this year because the winner of the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness are not running at Belmont. But if you want a fun moment, a really beautiful moment, in the history of the sport of kings, take a look at one that was run almost 50 years ago, 49 years ago, the 1973 Belmont Stakes, where Secretariat literally ran away from the field, ending up with a more than 30 length victory. It is a thing of true beauty to watch. A magnificent horse running the most magnificent race in the history of the sport. Take two minutes and watch it. Because for now, that is the best 60-ish seconds of your week.